For this experiment, you're going to need a bottom chamber that's going to also have the glass plates, the comb, and the spacers. You're also going to need the apparatus itself, a top cover, and a power supply. All of these can be found in your electrophoresis drawer. Taking everything out of your bottom chamber, uh, we're going to lay out a paper towel. We'll take everything out. And there's uh, a square glass plate, a glass plate that has little notches on it, an acrylic block, and then there's the comb and the spacers. We'll take all that out. And what we're going to do is use a little bit of ethanol to clean off the glass plates. This is just to get rid of any dust or residue that might be on the plates. Go ahead and just clean one side of each of them. And then you can also use the chem wipe uh, to wipe down the spacers and the comb as well. Once the ethanol has dried, we'll go ahead and we will take the plate with the notches on it and then place the spacers to line up with the notches on both sides. We'll then take the square plate, flip it over, and place it on top so that we have a sort of sandwich with the spacers in between the two glass plates. We're then going to place it into the apparatus with the square glass plate facing outward and the notches facing inward. We can then tighten it uh, using the clamps on each side. It just has to be finger tight and just make sure just to kind of go around and make sure everything is tight. Then on the other side, what we're going to do is we're going to use the acrylic plate and do the exact same. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm actually running two gels, uh, so it looks a little bit different. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the combs and then place them in between the plates like so. Uh, make sure that they're level and straight and they should look something like this. Once the combs are in, use a marker to mark the bottom of one of the wells, as well as another mark about an inch or so below it. The TEA will prepare a 1% agarose solution by dissolving uh, some agarose in some water. To fully dissolve, the agarose will be warmed up in the microwave. Once it's fully dissolved, it will look like this, and the TA will come around and pipette the agarose plug onto your apparatus. The agarose will fill up this bottom well here, and it will solidify in about 15 minutes. While the agarose is solidifying, you can go ahead and prepare your gel solutions by mixing together the 4x buffer, the acrylamide, and also the water. Do not add the APS or the Temid until you're ready to pour the gel. Additionally, you can add the TCE carefully to the resolving gel. This is going to need a lot of mixing to actually get it to dissolve into the solution, but it will eventually go. Once the agarose has solidified, we can go ahead and pour our resolving gel. Add the APS, give it a mix, and then add the Temid only once you're ready. Quickly get a pipette and pipette it in between the glass plates. You're going to fill up the resolving gel up to the lower line that you drew originally. If there's any bubbles, you can shake it and tap it to try to get the bubbles dislodged. After about five minutes, you're going to carefully add a little bit of water to the top of each gel. This is simply just so that the gel does not dry out. You're just going to carefully drip in a little bit of water onto the gel as to not disturb the gel itself since it's still liquid. After about 15 minutes, the gel should be completely solidified. You can confirm this by tipping it to see that it is not moving. Using a chem wipe, wick away any additional water that remains in the gels. Once this is done, you can get your stacking gel buffer, add the APS, and then when you're ready, add the Temid. Quickly pipette it into the gel and fill it all the way up to the top. Then carefully place the comb in, making sure not to get any bubbles trapped below the comb. The comb should be placed where you drew your line originally.
While the stacking gel is solidifying, you can prepare your samples by mixing together 2.5 microliters of 4x loading buffer and 7.5 microliters of your sample. To get ready to run the gel, take some 1x buffer and fill the middle chamber all the way up to the top. Then you can take out the combs so that the buffer can go down into the wells. Now this is probably better to do before you take out the combs, but you can also mark off the bottom of the wells to make it a little bit easier to see uh, for whenever you're loading. I kind of forgot to do it here, so I clumsily did it afterwards. Now to load your samples using a P10 pipette, you're going to pipette 10 microliters of sample into each well. Uh, as you can see from that first one, you want to pipette it slowly so that the sample will naturally just fall down into the well. Once you've loaded the samples, you can place the 1x buffer in the bottom chamber. Then you can place the lid on, making sure that the red wires connect to the red terminals and the black wires to the black terminals. You can then also connect the other ends of the wire to the power supply. Again, red to red, black to black. Turn on the power supply, there's a switch in the back and the power button on the front. You can go ahead and set it to 150 volts and then click on run. We're going to run it at 150 volts um, in order to get the samples past the stacking gel. Once the samples have traveled through the stacking gel and have reached the resolving gel border, then we can turn it up to 250 volts and let it run at 250 volts for the remainder of the gel. I tried to make a cool time lapse of this whole process, but unfortunately, whenever the gel runs, it gets hot and it makes a whole bunch of condensation on the inside of the cover walls. So the picture itself isn't very good, but nonetheless, here it is. Once it's done, go ahead and turn off the power supply, unplug all the cables, and remove the top cover. The sample should have run so that the dye is about one centimeter from the bottom of the gel. Go ahead and get some paper towels because this next part will be messy. Remove the apparatus and dump out the buffer in the bottom chamber. Put the apparatus back in to the bottom chamber. Loosen the gel by loosening the clamps and then the buffer in the middle chamber is all going to flow out. Take out the gel and set aside. Next, carefully remove the spacers by pulling them out. Then, using a razor blade, pop off one of the glass plates. It's usually the top one. The gel will stay on the bottom glass plate. Then, using some saran wrap, place it on it, flip it over, and then pull the saran wrap off the table and use a razor blade to transfer the gel from the plate to the saran wrap. Now get a weigh boat and then flip the saran wrap over in order to transfer it from the saran wrap into the weigh boat. Rinse it off with a little bit of water. You really want to rinse off any of that extra SDS buffer because it will um, interfere with the next part. So rinse it off around two or three times, draining the water each time. Then store it under a little bit of water until the next part. So next we need to get the gels into the gel imager. Uh, the TA will probably help you with this because uh, it can be a bit tricky. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, these gels are very fragile and they can break very, very easily. Um, so as you can see, I'm just ever so carefully sliding them into place 
and then um, putting them into the gel imager for the irradiation and imaging. After imaging, we're going to need to get the gels back in order to do western blot on them. Again, the TA will do this because this is a very delicate process, but essentially I am just ever so carefully using a little bit of water um, in order to get the gels out of the imager and into some wave oats. For the Kumasi staining of gels, we're actually going to be using the same reagent that we used in last week's lab for the protein quantification uh, for the Bradford assay. It's the exact same reagent, and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to pour it onto the gels, and then we're going to set these in a shaker incubator at 37 degrees for about one hour, and it's rotating at about 60 revolutions per minute. Um, what this is going to do is the Kumasi stain is going to interact with the proteins like they do with the protein quantification lab and uh, bind to them. And it's going to give us a blue color that we're actually going to be able to see them on the gel. So after the hour, we go ahead and decant off the liquid into a beaker and we're going to um, rinse these gels with a little bit of deionized water. Now, what we need to do here is to de-stain uh, the gel, and that's to get rid of any color that's in there that isn't actually complex for the protein. Now, really, the whole gel itself has dye all over it, uh, so you cannot really clearly see the bands of the protein. So this de-staining process is really important in order to get some better contrast so that the protein bands actually stick out. So the de-staining process is a mixture of microwaving the gel in water for about 10 seconds, taking it out, mixing it up, and then doing it again and again and again. Eventually the dye will come out of the gel, but it will stay bound to the protein. This way we'll get the high contrast and we'll be able to see our protein bands. Now, gel de-staining and staining is more of an art than a science. Uh, there really no, is no exact answer as to how many times you need to microwave it, mix it, etc., etc. Uh, really, you just keep going until you see what you want to see. One of the downsides to Kumasi staining, other than taking a long time, is all the waste that's generated. Now to image the gels, I'm going to use this white light conversion screen. And then I'm going to carefully place the gels onto the gel imager again. And then I'll slide them in, take the pictures, and then we will be done. <laughs> 